In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. Saint um, Anthony Mary, uh, uh, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we are on volume 22. Um, 7, 1, 19, Jesus says, when the human generations have known all the knowledges about my divine will, the great goods of my kingdom, and how the soul who impetrated it, this is Louisa, uh, suffered such long sacrifices, my knowledges in your sacrifices, Louisa, united together, shall be powerful magnets, irresistible spurs, incessant calls, penetrating light, deafening voices, that making them deaf to all other things shall leave them hearing to the to listen to the sweet teachings of the divine fiat and to accept a kingdom that was impetrated for them with so many sacrifices. So what we're going to learn is we're going to learn not only the book of heaven, but the, the prodigy, Jesus says, the prodigy of prodigies of the divine will is Luisa Picaretta and the divine will. You can't separate the two. And what you see here is when mankind knows the knowledges and the great sufferings of Luisa, they will leave everything else and begin to live this kingdom of the divine will. Louisa, see, this is this is why we always have pictures of Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. Um, these are the three who suffered the most. Uh, just last week was uh, the sufferings, uh, the, the the day of uh, the feast day of Saint John de Beauf, uh who, when you read what he he prayed to God, he said to God, just said to Jesus, he prayed, he, he left a letter for his brothers in France, and he said. Uh, I haven't suffered enough. I haven't I haven't gone through enough sufferings to give this this Catholic faith to the natives. And he says, I desire to go through all the sufferings of all the saints combined so that the faith would be given to the natives in America. And when you look it took him three days to die, 
the first thing they did was they tied him to a post with his hands outstretched and they burnt his skin off his body. They peeled his skin off his body. And then what they did was they um, cauterized, they cut off his hands to get him off the, the thing, cut off his hands and cauterized the, the stumps with, uh, you know, burning torches. Then they hung these hatchets, burning hatchets, um, in the front of him and in the back of him. So when he leaned back, when he leaned back to get the, them off his back, he would burn, be burnt in front. When he leaned forward, he'd be burnt in back. Then again, there was no skin. They ripped that all off his body and he wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't cry out. So they, uh, cut out his tongue with, with, uh, they, they put charcoal uh, burning sticks in his mouth and burn his tongue and cut out, cut out his tongue. And then, he would look at them with love. So then they gouged, gouged his eyes out with, with flaming, um, uh, sticks. And, uh, and again, this took three days to do. And then Jesus, you know, I mean, he said he wanted to go through all the suffering. Be careful what you pray for. And then he, um, then they scalped him and then they cut out his heart and ate it. They said, this is what brave is. He didn't cry out. He didn't scream. And they said, we want this spirit. And they, they cut out his heart and they ate, ate his heart, ate his, drank his blood, ate his, ate his flesh. This is nothing compared to what Louisa went through. This is what we're going to find out. Louisa, Jesus says, I crucify you every day, Louisa. And Louisa would say to Jesus, you know, you make me die every day. Why don't you let me go to heaven? <laughs> she, you know, if you're if you're going to let me die, you let me go to heaven. But you always bring me back to my senses. You bring me back to being alive again. And Jesus said to Louisa, he says, I'd love to see you being reborn continuously. And then this is what we're going to hear. The suffering is is part of the life of Christ. The suffering is what Our Lady went through, the seven sorrows, uh, the seven uh, sorrows of Mary. Uh, it's not just seven swords, uh, Jesus tells Louis, uh, Louisa, but infinite number of swords went into our heart because of our sin going turning against God. Jesus is going to show us what Louisa went through. And these are the three who suffered the most. And... Um, the father in, in uh, volume 17, May 4th, 1925, the, the father said, uh, basically, I want a reflection of the Holy Trinity on earth. And under the paternity of the father is the maternity of Mary. Under Jesus, son of God, is Jesus, son of Mary. Under the Holy Spirit is Louisa and us linked to Louisa. So this reflection of the Trinity on earth, we're going to see in time, uh, it's Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And this is why if you have a picture of Jesus, put Mary near it because they're always together. And if you have a picture of Jesus and Mary, put a picture of Louisa near it. These are the three who suffered the most. And this is what he says. He says, therefore, in order to form a great work, there is much to do, much to suffer. Everything is necessary. And what you, what to you seems a, a pain of no significance for others, what you go through, Louisa, might not be important to you. But for others who will read this and know this, it may be a pitiful voice that moved by it, they shall recognize themselves too ungrateful not to accept a good so great that costs so much because of them, because of our sinfulness, because of our human will. Therefore, Jesus says, let me do and leave me free to do what I, God, want. Our, our Lord, see, suffering is part of our life. Each one of us is suffering spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Each one of us is a suffering. But what are we doing with our suffering? Do we complain about it? Are we negative? Do we do we drag our cross behind us? Or, or are, do we embrace it like Jesus? Do we embrace it like Our Lady? 
Do we embrace it like Louisa? Jesus says, I'm going to do this. But I, he says to Louisa, they don't want to suffer. Will you suffer in their place for them? And that's what Louisa went through. I am 22, 8, 21, 1927. My daughter, my holy humanity hides within you. My holy humanity hides within you, Louisa. And I, God, give place and large field to my divine will to let it operate freely in you, Louisa. To let it form its kingdom in you, Louisa. There was once a... There was once the free time in which my holy humanity had its field of action in you, and therefore it was always with you and by you. And my divine will let me do it so that I might prepare you to receive, listen to this, the field of action that made more extensive by the endless fiat that reigns in you. And so I, God, must let it do it. Do it. More so since it does not prevent me from remaining with you, but because we are always inseparable. And while while being with you, I, God, delight in binding your soul like a tiny little bird with a thread of light of my divine will. And I make you fly in the immensity of the divine will, flinging you into its innumerable acts, keeping my hand, keeping in my hands the thread that holds you bound. Again, this is this is a divine language, and, and Jesus is explaining it to us so that we can understand. A, a, a thread of light. It's not going to hurt you, Louisa said. Jesus says, Louisa, it holds you bound to me, this string of light, but I let you fly wherever you want in the immensity of the divine fiat. You will never be separated from me, Jesus says. That's what we want. Never to be separated from God. God loves us so much that as we read this, we begin to understand he doesn't want us to be away from him. He is our light. He is our life. He is our love. We don't want to be away from God. So, We also have this string of light, if we wish, to be bound to God. And what is that string of light? He says, it's my divine will, never to be separated from God. 523, 12, 20, 19, 27. Oh, how beautiful was the field of your soul invested by these sons, one more beautiful than the other. It transformed completely into a divine field. All heaven was enamored by this field. And in looking at it, it felt its happiness being doubled. Double. Now, the one who has sown has the right to harvest. And since it is a divine field, I am, he uses God's name, I am the owner of this field. Not only to harvest, but to sow again. So I am doing nothing other than sowing it again. Don't you see how I am all intent on working and sowing seeds of light into this field so that as they germinate, New sons of the knowledges of my my divine will may come out and work brings silence. And my silence is warmth, maturing, fecundity in order to transform the little seeds of light into more refulgent sons. I, God, work in you always, either in one way or another. The work of my divine will is long and therefore I am always occupied and I keep you occupied. So let me do this and follow me. So what is God doing? He's bringing about in Louisa a divine reality of who she is, of who God is, of what God expects of humans. His holy humanity is found there in Louisa. So he's saying, I want want you to be the one to give this gift to everyone else. As Francis was the one to give Franciscan, the Franciscan life to the, to the to the the religious communities as as dominic was to give religious life to the dominican communities the divine will is given to us through louisa let me do this follow me don't 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 leave me and that's what jesus is saying 
What he says to Louisa, he also says to us. Rhyme 23, 118, 1928. My daughter, it is necessary to form the first priest that they serve me like the apostles served me to form my holy church. The priests who shall occupy themselves with these writings in order to publish them, putting them out to print them, to make them known, shall be the new evangelists of the kingdom of my supreme will. And just as the ones who are most mentioned in my gospels are the four evangelists who wrote it to their highest honor and my glory, so it shall be for those priests who shall occupy themselves with the writings of the knowledges of my divine will in order to publish them. Like new evangelists, there shall be greater mention of them in the kingdom of the divine will to their highest honor and my greatest glory in seeing the order of creature, the life of heaven on earth. The only purpose of creation was to return to my bosom. Therefore, in these circumstances, I, God, expand the circle. And like fishermen, I, God, catch those priests who must serve me for a kingdom so holy. Therefore, let me do and do not be worried. Louisa was worrying at that time. She says, I can't find any priests that want this. <laughs> and Jesus says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Let me do this. I've had people say, well, there's no priest to teach this. Yes, there is. There's priests to teach this. Don't Protestantize this gift of gifts, this sacrament of sacraments. Don't Protestantize this book of heaven. It's very important that, I mean, God will let you do it. He let the Protestant, and what, what the Protestant church, it's, it's split from the Catholic church, and now it's fragmented to, what, 40,000 uh, denominations, 40,000 without the church, the, the church, Jesus says the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we'll see that we're going to see this in our time. The gates of hell will not prevail. What does that mean? It's a full attack against the Holy church, but it's not going to prevail inside and out. It's a full attack, but it's not going to prevail. God wins, and, and our job is to uh, be faithful and obedient to Christ in his church. And as he says here, he says he is going to do this. This is why the, the layperson's job is to say to the priests with the Book of Heaven, with the Hours of the Passion, with the Virgin Mary, Father, can you help me understand this? And they'll say no, because <laughs> they're too busy. No, I've got other things. I, I don't. You know, I, I don't want this. And you go, okay, don't get upset. It's Jesus says, every time you mention the divine will, it's a seed in the ground. You don't plant an apple tree in your yard and expect an apple the next day. It takes time. It's the same thing with this. As you pray, as you say to the priest that you know, can you help me with this? I really need to understand this. Can you help me? They will begin to be the priest that God will use. Don't don't worry about if there's many or none. That's why he says to Louisa, he says, don't be worried. I'm going to take care of this. Let me do this. All you have to do, all we have to do is present it to the priest. Uh, and, and, and God's got it. I mean, I, what God has done in your life, he's done in the priest lives as well. He's prepared them for this time. He knows the only thing that's going to get us through this is the book of heaven. Nothing else. All the heresies of the church are attacking the church right now. Again, all of them at once. How do we get through this? Jesus says, don't worry. I've got it all planned. I'm going to give you the book of heaven. Watch what the book of heaven is going to do. It, it's, it's going to teach us the truths of the church, the faith of the church in a way that the saints could never do it. Why? Jesus is teaching us. Watch what watch what's going to happen with this book of heaven. 524, 9, 16, 19, 28. I thought to myself, and why so many sacrifices? Why so many difficulties and attempts at, at new attempts to write without managing to do it? And for so many difficulties, doing it with ease. And my sweet Jesus, coming out from within my interior, that's where Jesus dwells in the interior of Louisa, told me, my daughter, do not be concerned. Don't worry. Jesus says, Jesus says, does worry add one moment to your life? He says, of course it doesn't. And then he says, stop worrying. I wanted to take pleasure from you a little bit and to enjoy the sweet squeezes out of your sacrifices. 
And as you tried to write and you could not manage, I tried again and tried again. I, God, felt wounded by your love in wanting to sacrifice yourself to fulfill my divine will for you to write. It's the same thing when we read. He says, I feel wounded by your love of wanting to sacrifice yourself to fulfill my divine will as you read. There will be some times when you'll read and you won't comprehend anything. Your, your mind will be too busy. You'll be too tired. He says, but I take pleasure from your wounds, rendering you incapable of keeping your eyes open in order to write, in order to read. So don't you want your Jesus to amuse himself with you and to enjoy a, a little bit? So here, Jesus is enjoying to see us wanting to read and, and not being able to. Moreover, you must know that the sacrifices made to fulfill my divine will forms pure, forms noble, forms divine blood for the soul. Wanting, just wanting. And just as food forms blood for the body, I, dipping my brush of love in this blood, amuse myself in forming in her more beautiful, more charming, my image in the soul. That's what God is doing as you read. Therefore, let me do, and you think of only doing my divine will, and I, God, shall do something more beautiful in the little newborn of my adorable will. God is calling us to, to be newborn like Louisa. Bind 25, 12, 13, 19, 28. So when I deprive you of me, I, God, remain hidden in you. And I prepare the work to give you and my new life to rise again in you. See, see what he's doing? He's letting us share in his divinity. I too suffered the pain of death to make all creatures rise again in the pain of my death. Death suffered in the divine order and in the order to fulfill the divine will produces divine life. And so that all creatures might receive this divine life and after having suffered so many deaths, I wanted to really die. How many goods did my resurrection did not, not produce? How many goods did my resurrection not produce? It can be said that with my resurrection, all the goods of my redemption rose again. And with it, all goods rose again for mankind, as well as their very life. Therefore, be attentive and let me do. See, Jesus said, I rose from the dead so that you will rise from your human will now before you die. He says, true resurrection isn't after you die. True resurrection is now, Jesus says, to rise up from the worry, the fear, the anxiety, the complaints, the negativity, the sin. Why? To begin to live this abundant life. Let me do, Jesus says. Be attentive. And again, that to me is read. 5, 25, 3, 13, 19, 29. The pain, the new harrowing death that you suffer because of my privation is called, is the new call that arcane and mysterious and enrapturing voice calls me and I come. And in return, I manifest to you a new truth and bring you the new life of your Jesus. So here, when Jesus didn't appear to her, she was dying. And, and she says, Jesus says, this, this death that you're going through gives you a new truth, a new life of your Jesus. Again, like I said, this is not an apparition or a vision or a locution that Louise went through. She was with God. And when, when she didn't see him, she couldn't breathe. Her heart couldn't beat. And uh, this, this, these deaths that she went through, it's a new call. He says, of a new life of your Jesus. That This is what's going to happen to us. God's going to fill us with a share in divinity. More so since the knowledges of my divine will are divine lives that come out from the womb of our divinity. Therefore, the divine pain that you suffer because of my privation has the virtue of calling from heaven these divine lives of the knowledges of our divine will to reveal themselves to you. And that's what's going to happen to us as you read. God is going to reveal himself to you so as to make them reign on the face of the earth. What does that mean? In your family, Jesus is there.
In your neighborhood, Jesus is there. In your parish, Jesus is there. Why? Jesus is reigning in you in a way that he's been waiting for for a long time. Now, nobody has this, the fullness of it. Louisa has it. She's the only one. And what Jesus is saying is, as we enter into this gift, little by little, step by step, more of this light, this life, this love of God emanates from us because Jesus is there. Oh, if you knew what value one single knowledge of what my divine will contains, one single manifestation, one single truth, what good it can produce, you would hold it as the most precious relic and one kept as more than sacrament. Why? <laughs> when I was explaining this to, to uh, Cardinal Burke, you know, I said, this is the sacrament of sacraments. Everything comes from the divine will. Everything comes from the divine will. The sacraments come from the divine will. And what Jesus is now saying is this is going to manifest itself in a very powerful way to all of mankind. That's why there's only going to be one church, one flock, one shepherd. Nobody else will want to join any other religion because they're going to realize this is it. This is the universal life that God breathed into Adam. This Catholic life is the universal life. This sacramental life is the universal life. So he says, therefore, let me do and abandon yourself in my arms, waiting for your Jesus to bring you the divine lives of the knowledges of his fiat. This is what he's got planned. Volume 26, 7, 14, 19, 29. Now, after I, God, became sure about you, Louisa, and that's what he's doing about us. He wants to make sure that we want this. After I, God, became sure about you, Louisa, I secured my work, my acting changed, and I made you break the silence. And the ardor of my inst instructions of my and of my speaking was such and so great that I can call you, Louisa, the cathedra of my divine will, the secretary of its most intimate secrets. The cathedra, you know, that is the chair of the of the bishop in the in the cathedral. I call you, Louisa. The cathedra of my divine will. Now, Our Lady is the seat of wisdom. Jesus is saying to Louisa, you are the seat of the divine will. You're the human that possesses this. The Son of God possesses it. The Mother of God possesses it. Adam was a human. Adam lost this. Jesus says, I'm waiting for a soul, a human, to possess this. And therefore, you, Louisa, are the human that possesses this. You I call you the cathedra of my divine will, the secretary of its most intimate secrets, such that as you were unable to contain them all within yourself, I, God, commanded you to manifest them to my priest. Again, it's the priesthood that's going to give this to the lay people. I know that's hard for some people to swallow because they go, well, what I remember... I remember when I said the first one next to uh, Louisa who will possess this gift will be the Holy Father. I was telling this to some people in Corrado about 20 years ago because it's it's right in the, the three appeals. And uh, they were like this. And I said, what's wrong? They said, what about us? I went, who are you? <laughs> who, who are you? You're nobodies. I'm nobody. It's going to be the vicar of Christ. It has to be the vicar of Christ. He has the keys to the kingdom. Read the three appeals. You know, what about us? Once the Pope has this, and this is why there's the things going on in the Vatican now. Once the Pope has this, it's home free. I mean, the kingdom is here. He opens the door. Everyone enters. Everyone becomes Catholic. The universal life begins for mankind where it left off before Adam sinned. Once Adam sinned, it was over. God had to come to earth. Jesus and Mary had to come to earth as the new Adam and the new Eve. Why? To breathe back into mankind this universal life. That's why they started the Catholic faith again. 
the universal life again. Now, after 2,000 years, Jesus says, finally, 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 I have a newborn. A human has to have this gift. The son, mother of God, the son of God has this gift, but a human has to have it. But it also has to be a man and a woman. Adam and Eve for creation. Jesus and Mary for redemption. Louisa and the Pope for sanctification. It's a new beginning that's coming. And this is why everything's happening in the Vatican. The, the devil couldn't stop Louisa. So he's trying to do he's trying to do something else. He ain't gonna win. It's impossible for him to win. God is going to win. God is going to win. So he says this. And this acting of mine was necessary. Otherwise, how would my divine will have become known? Now, my daughter, in this last period of your life, you feel another way of acting of mine. Do not be concerned. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let me do this. Let God reign. I shall know how to give my work the last coat. Courage. And again, the words of Saint, uh, excuse me, uh, Pope uh, Benedict. Then you will have the divine will in your power. Why do you fear? Therefore, always forward in my divine will. We don't go backwards. I know some people that want to go back to the 50s. No, no. God doesn't work like that. You don't retreat. You always move forward. And moving forward today is embracing the divine will. And as you read, as you study, as you put this into practice, you know, you love the saints. You love the great saints, the great mystics of the church. This is something that will astonish everybody. Volume 27. This ardor of love of ours shall unite together. This is Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. That of creation and that of my incarnation and shall make them one. And it shall be an ardor of triumphing love. This is the triumph of the Mary, the, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Shall give the kiss of the triumphant love, of the conquering love, of love that wins over everything. To give its kiss of perennial peace, its kiss of light that shall put to flight the night of the human will and shall make the full day of my divine will arise that shall be the bearer of all goods. How I, God, long for it. Our love seethes so much within me. I, God, feel the necessity to let it overflow outside. And if you knew what relief I, God, feel when pouring it out with you, Louisa, I speak to you, Louisa, of my divine volition, the ardor of my love that gives me the delirious fever calms down and feeling refreshment. I, God, put myself at work so that all, everyone may be, uh, may be my divine will in your soul. So everything, everyone is found where? In Louisa, the newborn. Why? As everyone was found in Adam, and Adam fell, all of us fell. Now, we're the one who's being given, give, the, given back this gift. Everybody was found in Louisa. This is why we call Louisa Little Mama Louisa. There's a, there's a whole section on Mama Louisa. And uh, it is so, it is so, I remember I was in, I think I was in Florida. And I was talking to some people and I brought up Mama Louisa. This was years ago. And they said, we have a mama. We have Mama Mary. And I went, well, Jesus talks about Mama Louisa. They said, we've been reading the divine will for 15 years. We've never read it. I said, it's all throughout the, all throughout the 36 volumes, Mama Louisa. Jesus calls her my second mama. And they said, we've never read it. So that's one of the things that we put together uh the, a theme. See, these are themes that as you get to know them, you begin to understand the depth of this great gift of the divine will. And that's that's found at divinewill.org, divinewill.org. Anything that's there is yours. Anything, anything that's there, read it, study it, put it, let Jesus teach you uh, what he, what this gift is about. It's so magnificent. Find 28, 10, 7, 1930. 
Therefore, daughter, my daughter, be attentive, be faithful, and allow that I may sow the celestial seed in your soul, that I may find no hindrance, hindrance to let it germinate. If there is uh, the seed, there is the sure hope that germinating, this seed will produce more seeds. That's why Jesus said, the saints are like the flowers on the tree. You ever go to an orchard? First, there's all the flowers. You know, it's beautiful in the spring. He says, the children of the divine will, is there, that was the saints. The children of the divine will are not the flowers. The children is the fruit. Why? There's more seeds for more trees. Jesus said, be fruitful and multiply. He, you know what he said about the desert? He said, the deserts are there because of the fall of Adam. He says, if, if Adam didn't sin, the devil, the devil, the desert would be packed, crammed with people. See, because everything of God is a work of God. The stars, the plants, the animals, they're all works of God. The only life of God is a baby. And what the evil one wants is he wants to destroy babies. He doesn't love God. He doesn't love the children of God. And he has lied and deceived mankind to believe that there's too many people. <laughs> you know, heaven is going to be packed. <laughs> the new era is going to be crammed with people. Okay, you wait till you see what God's got planned. So that it can produce more seeds. But if the seed does not exist, all the hope ceases and it's useless to hope for a kingdom of my divine will. And just as it would be, have been useless to hope for the redemption, if Mary, the celestial queen, had not conceived me in the fruit of her maternal womb, the fruit of her faithfulness, the fruit of her firmness and sacrifices. Therefore, let me do, let God produce this abundant life in us to be faithful to me. And I, God, shall take care of everything else. Who is in charge? It's God. All we say is what the Blessed Mother said. Fiat nihi. Let it be done as you say. Total submission. Total surrender. Total, total docility. Words are, that are hated today, especially by women. This whole thing against man is against Jesus Christ. The whole thing against Father is against our Heavenly Father. We, we've got to get back to the truth. And Jesus is going to do this. So that's why he says, let me do this and it will be perfect. Vine 29, 2, 17, 1931. A suffering that is forced or out of necessity is nothing great before God. Forced suffering is not great. What enamors and raptures and reaches the point of binding God himself is the voluntary suffering. Fiat. <laughs> You stub your toe, fiat. Whatever you want, God, fiat. Total surrender, fiat. Don't, you don't pray for suffering because you're going to get it. <laughs> you, I, I, I know that for a fact. You don't pray for suffering. You're going to be, you're going to suffer. You are suffering physically, spiritual, mental, emotional. But what you pray for is let it be done as you wish. And then when you stub your toe, you don't swear. You don't curse. You say fiat. Okay, Lord, this is what you want me to go through? Fiat. What God loves, he says, is voluntary suffering. Whatever you want, God, I want. Whatever you desire, I desire. And, and it's it's a total surrender to God. And, and you will be very surprised what God has planned. Very surprised. So he says this. If you knew how my heart is was wounded, when you would put yourself in my hands like a little lamb so that I might bind you and do to you whatever I wanted. Fiat, let it be done as you say. I deprive you of motion. I petrified you. And I can say I made you feel mortal pains. And if you would let me do it, if and you would let me do it. And this is this was nothing. The strongest high that you would not go out of the state of pains in which your, your sacrifice or Jesus had put you in. If my priest would not come to call you uh, to obedience. This is what constitutes you true victim. 
I mean, all of us are suffering. All of us are physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And and what Jesus is saying is like when, when the angel said, you're going to be the mother of God. She says, how can this be? I don't know, man. I want to please God, but I've already chose a life of virginity. I'm not going to have children. And what Jesus says, the angel said, it will be through the power of the Holy Spirit. She said, fiat mihi, let it be done as you say. Total surrender, total docility. Her plans were changed. It's, it's like when Joseph said to Mary in Bethlehem, we've got to go to Egypt. Or they didn't go, hey, we got a home up in Nazareth. You know, we ain't going to Egypt. She said, fiat mihi, let it be done as you say. This docility brings peace, joy, and happiness. True victim. This constitutes you true victim. Volume 29, 33, 30, 31. Then while I was amidst re, mid reluctance and fear of being surprised by my usual sufferings, my adorable Jesus making himself seen in, a, in great sufferings told me, my daughter, what is the matter? You no longer want to suffer together with me. That's what's happening. We're suffering together with Jesus. How can this be? You want to leave me alone? You want to take away from me the rights that you have given me many times? That I might do with you whatever I want. Let it be done to me as you say. Those are the words of the Blessed Mother. Good daughter, do not give me the sorrow. Abandon yourself in my arms and let me do what I want. Either God is in charge of our life or he's not. Either God knows what we need or, or, or he doesn't. Either God is purifying us for his greater glory or he's not and that's what we have to we have to get to that point of saying to jesus whatever you want is what i want let it be done as you say and i my love this is louisa forgive me you know the struggle i find in my i i find in myself in i just heard somebody knock at the door sir I heard, I know the struggles i find myself in and what profound humiliations i have been cast into if things were were as before, when I did, when did I ever refuse you anything? Therefore, mind and therefore mind and think of Jesus, of what you are doing to me, into what maze you cast me. If you let me fall into my usual sufferings, so here, Louisa says, I you know, uh, I don't want to back out of what I promise you. He says. And if I say to you, Fiat, the effort I make is so great that I feel myself saying, dying, Jesus, help me. And Jesus, my good daughter, do not fear. Humiliation is uh, is bearer of glory over the contempt of creatures. Arises uh, uh, the divine appreciation and the abandonment is the call of the faithful company of your Jesus. Therefore, let me do. And, and again, He's, he's teaching us humiliation is bearer of glory. Uh, over contempt of creatures arises divine appreciation. And their abandonment is the call of faithful company to your Jesus. So he's saying humiliation, um, contempt of creatures, meaning I'd rather be with you, Jesus, than others. Uh, uh, abandonment. Uh, is the call of the faith, abandoning everyone and everything, is the faithful company of your Jesus. And he says, let me do. Then he says this. If you knew how divine justice is armed, you would not be op opposed. On the contrary, you would pray me to make you suffer, so to spare in part your brothers. This was Louisa's life. Louisa's life. Jesus said to Louisa, he showed Louisa what he had to do. He would show Louisa the uh, earthquakes and the floods and the famines and the plagues. And he would, Louisa would say, Lord, Lord, you can't do this to your, your people. And he says, somebody has to make amends for this. Would you do it? She says, I'll do anything. She said this. Louisa said this. I will die for every human being so that they get to heaven. I will, I will die for them. And Jesus says, well, we'll see. We'll see. 
And what's really amazing is Jesus says, you would pray to me to make me you suffer, to spare your brothers. Louisa wanted no one uh, to go to hell. And she said to Jesus one time, she said, uh, uh, Lord, Lord, you, you know, I'll take their place. And he says, will you? He says, let me show you what they're doing. And he showed her. And she came back and said, I, I didn't realize it was that horrible. I didn't realize it was that terrible, what was going on. And we, we have to understand that today, um, Our Lady has said in, in numerous places that the world is far worse than it, what it was during the time of the flood. And, and again, our God wants us to recognize that he's going to take care of us. But uh, he's going he's to ask us uh, to help us spare our brothers and sisters. We stand in the breach for all of mankind. That's one of the things God is asking. And he, God, says, let me do this. I'll take care of everything. And he looks at our intentions. He looks at our intentions. Uh, do we want our brothers and sisters to be saved? Do we want the kingdom to be established? Do we want to be faithful and obedient? And, and when we say, yes, God goes good. I'll take care of everything. You just, you be faithful to me. And when we do this, God says, good. So we'll end there. We'll be back in 15 minutes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.